Good morning from Fresh Start. What a blessing it is to be back in the house of the Lord. Uh, we are here in our Hosea study. Uh, the book of Hosea in chapter 2, we're going to be picking up around verse number 8 this morning. Hosea meaning salvation in the Hebrew. And uh, that's what Father uh, desires for his children, that uh, he would that none would perish, but all come to the knowledge of the truth. And uh, he wants uh, salvation for his children, and he wants them to understand his word. And, you know, without broadcasting and without bringing out the word like it needs to be for everyone to hear, it's, it's very hard for uh, people in the rural area, in, uh, in places that uh, don't get a chance to hear much, to be able to know the truth. And that's why Father is pouring out his spirit this day. Uh, Father is doing everything possible and that for you to be able to understand God's word and be more fluent with his word and uh, be able to help others and uh, we're thankful for that this morning but uh, if you would uh, turn with us this morning to uh, Hosea chapter 2 and verse number 8 and we'll get started. And while we're turning this morning, we'll ask Father for his blessings. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you thanking you for another blessed day. We ask, Father, that you would open ears and open eyes to your word. Allow your word to land on fertile ground this morning, Father, and we'll give you praise and give you glory for all things. In the precious name of Christ, I pray. Amen. Hosea chapter 2 and verse number 8. Uh, now, before we get into verse number 8 and on through, we want to recap just a little bit of what uh, had been taught last week. And we come to the understanding that uh, Father wanted Hosea to marry a harlot. And uh, the name of the harlot was uh, Gomer. And uh, completion is her name, is what it means. And uh, full, of, uh, full of measure of idolatry is exactly what she is. And uh, we see that. Mother Israel is full of idolatry, and that's the, the big concept that we're trying to study this morning and bring to fashion that people would, should be able to realize that they are in this confusion. They are in idolatry, but many people, they just do not realize, they do not see it. And uh, hopefully something could be said or done, and that to bring people to that understanding. And uh, as uh, Hosea uh, married Gomer, uh, we see that they had three children, and the first one was Jezreel. And uh, the word Jezreel means uh, uh, may God scatter and may God sow. Now, we have talked about how that God scattered, and uh, Israel is scattered today, and they do not know whom they are. And Father took their kingdom and uh, everything about them and scattered them because of their idolatry, their adulterous ways. And uh, we, we see here that also that he had uh, a, uh, a daughter and named her name Lo-Ruhama. God named these children and uh, this uh, Lo-Ruhama means not beloved. And uh, we see here and also that she had a son, another son, and uh, <clears throat> God called his name lo Ami, and uh, not my people. So we see here that God has done everything to bring to the view what has happened to Israel in the latter days. Uh, actually, before our days, Israel went astray, and... Uh, they did not want to do what Father had asked them to do. And it's, it's not a grievous thing to do God's commandments or his statutes or uh, to please the Lord. But they went after other gods, and uh, Father is a jealous God. And uh, he has feelings, and we're going to see that Father has feelings. And uh, I don't know about you, but uh, I can relate with what Father is dealing with because of, uh, of the adulterous actions, and uh, it's a sad situation. But also, there is hope for Israel, 
and we're going to read about that this morning. So starting at verse number 8, and it reads, For she did not know that I gave her corn and wine and oil and multiplied her silver and gold, which they prepared for Baal. It's very important that a person realizes where their wealth comes from. For somebody to say that they are a self-made person or that their wealth has come because of their energy or their work or their uh, prosperity has come because of their education, I would like to say to these individuals, you need to take a moment and evaluate what it is that God has done. God has given to every man liberally. And what we do with it, we will be judged. Now, Father gives to some that can handle it and uh, some that uh, can handle prosperity uh, without it going too far out of whack. In other words, uh, letting their minds and their heads swell. But here it says, For she did not know that I gave her corn and wine and oil. There are many today that do not recognize the blessings uh, that come from God. They do not give God the honor. And uh, my mind goes uh, to the ten leopards. And uh, there were uh, ten of them and only one turned back and gave God the glory. I believe that God deserves our glory today. He deserves our praise and uh, our thanksgiving for what Father has done uh, throughout our lives. He's allowed us to make it this far and given us truths from his word, which is the greatest thing this world could ever afford. The world likes to paint you a picture and uh, make it as if it's exciting and uh, for an individual to, uh, well, go in debt or have these things and uh, have an abundance of all this stuff. But, friend, there's nothing greater in this world. Nothing will bring you peace in this world like the peace that God can give you. And it's a peace that surpasses all understanding. Father wants you to recognize that it's he that is in charge. And we give him all the glory here at Fresh Start. He said, I have given her the corn, the wine, and the oil, and multiplied her silver and gold, which they prepared for Baal. That's exactly what a lot of them do. Out of ignorance, they'll go and support a ministry that is not teaching God's word. Out of ignorance, a lot of people will send money to ministers on the television and uh, these super preachers that... Uh, Say just, you know, you send me X amount of dollars and I'll send you a, a prayer cloth and uh, this prayer cloth will help you and all these different ideas. But that's what God sees in it. He sees that it's been taken what he has given and is given out to Baal. And it's upset Father a lot. In Deuteronomy 32 and 15, God talks about Jeshurun. How that Jeshurun, that's a, a pet name for Israel, how Jeshurun has waxed fat. And I believe this nation is starting to see Jeshurun, starting to see the way that it affected the people, had it really nice for a long time. And I believe a lot of things are coming to an end. Verse 9 Therefore will I return and take away my corn in the time thereof and my wine in the season thereof and will recover my wool and my flax given to cover her nakedness. The day of reckoning is coming. And Father has quoted it many places in his word through many of his prophets. And why people do not recognize it, I do not understand. But Father wants us to prepare ourselves to know that even though we live in this world, even though we are a part of this world, we can be separate. And we can set aside some things and provide for ourselves for hard times. 
We don't really actually know exactly when these hard times will be. But I suggest that you prepare your family and prepare your home. A question would be asked, should I put up silver and put up things that I can use for bargaining during the days of the Antichrist? Yes, you should. There'll be a one-world system that'll take over, and there'll be a one-world money. And uh, God's children, those that understand, will not take part with that. They'll not take part, and we know that we have only a five-month period, 150 days, that we must endure. God is going to make a way. He'll make a way for all those that have a desire to do it His way. Father loves you, and He cares. Verse 10, And now I will discover her lewdness, in the sight of her lovers, and none shall deliver her out of my hand. This word uh, lewdness is a sexual conduct. And it's considered offensive. And God says that he's going to discover it. And he says, and none shall deliver her out of mine hand. Ezekiel chapter 23 In Ezekiel chapter 23, we have a, a verse here that, that stands out. Verse 29. And they shall deal with thee hatefully, and shall take away all thy labor, and shall leave thee naked and bare. And the nakedness of thy whoredoms shall be discovered by the lewdness and the whoredoms. Fathers proclaimed in many different places how that in this latter day Israel will be stripped. Be stripped of all that she has. And why I, underst why I don't understand why people do not see this coming. I've heard many people say, you know, I, I love the Lord and, and I, I go to church and uh, I, 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 I do my, my work for the Lord and I tithe like I should and I don't understand why these things are happening in my life. A person needs to evaluate what it is that they're being taught. God has brought ministers and teachers in this latter day to teach his word like it ought to be taught. But so often Israel is fixed to a fictional idea of a rapture theory. And they believe in this. Although it's not in God's word, they still believe it. Although Ezekiel chapter 13, God said he's against it, they're still for it. And they wonder why that they're having a hard time. Although they're giving their tithes to a local church and they're being faithful to that church, but yet they are in a Beth of Vin. They are in a house of nothingness. And that's why God does not want to bless. That's why the blessings will not come. Verse 11, I will also cause her Excuse me. I will also cause all her mirth to cease, her feast days, her new moons, her Sabbaths, and her solemn feasts. I, I'll, I'll explain this mirth. This mirth is gladness and laughter. And God said, I'm going to take away all this gladness and this laughter. And he said, not only that, but I'm going to take away her feast days and her new moons, and her Sabbaths, and all her solemn feasts. These solemn feasts, as in the holy day that God has set aside for us to have Passover, many of God's children celebrate Ishtar. And they do it because it goes with the flow. They do it because... It entertains the children. And they do it 
because that's what they have been taught to do. And they do not know and do not understand. But Father is brought out in his word many times how he's against those kind of things. Let's move on. Verse 12. And I will destroy her vines and her fig trees. Whereof she has said, These are my rewards that my lovers have given me, and I will make them a forest, and the beast of the field uh, shall eat them. You know what this beast of the fields are? This is your Kenites. It's exactly what I read to you there in Ezekiel 23 and verse 29, how that they will take. You think the Kenites aren't involved? They're very much involved. They bring out a new item every opportunity they can for an individual to invest in just so they can have it, so that they can take your money. It's amazing to me that so often people have perfectly good items, but yet they want something more. They want something new. They want something inexcessive. And that's exactly like a drunkard. A drunkard is an excessive individual. A drunkard is a person that stays, well, drunk all the time. And this excessiveness works in the same concept in that of what one wants and what they desire. Verse 13, And I will visit upon her the days of Balaam, <laughs> wherein she burned incense to them, and she decked herself with her earrings and her jewelries. And she went after her lovers and forgot me, saith the Lord. He says here, I will visit upon her the days of Balaam. You know what this days of Balaam is? It's heathen-like festivals like Ishtar and flyaway revivals. Revivals where super preachers come and Every message that they have is talking about a flying away or talking about a rapture idea or a rapture theory. God said he's against those kind of things. And what does she do? Well, she, being Israel, being that mother, she decks herself with her earrings and jewelry, gets all dressed up for these revivals, gets all dolled up for uh, this Ishtar. And she went after her lovers and forgot me. I said it just a moment ago. Father has feelings, just like you and I have feelings. No one likes to be pushed into a corner and forgotten. Everyone wants to have their place in this world. But I want to say that God should be first in our lives. If one understands and knows that Ishtar is of a fertility goddess. And uh, that, the, the revivals that one goes to to hear uh, the flyaway theory and uh, hooping and hollering for an hour. And uh, God's not in that kind of thing. God is upset with that. It's time that Israel wakes up. I want to turn over to Mark chapter 7. Turn with me to Mark chapter 7. And verse number 6. And he answered unto them, this is being Jesus speaking, Well hath Elias, Isaiah, prophesied of you hypocrites, as it is written, this people honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Seven, how be it in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines uh, the commandments of men. These traditions of man hold so much stronger in the minds of Israel than God's word. There has been people that have listened to this ministry and ministries like this one. And they get a little bit of the truths, but they go back to the idolatrous, to the adulterous ways that they lived before. 
And God's upset with that kind of thing. It's not what God wants. But back in Hosea chapter 2 and verse number 14. Now this is God's plan. This is a plan that God has. Verse 14. Therefore, behold, I will allure her and bring her into the wilderness and speak comfortably unto her. It will be a wilderness in that day. What day is that? Well, in Joel's prophecy, in Joel chapter 1, we mentioned it, I believe, last week. But Joel chapter 1, we see that we have the palmer worm that comes. And also the locusts, which are your fallen angels. And the canker worm, which is the religious leaders. And we also have the caterpillar, which are your false prophets. They come. And so we know that in that day, when they come, it will be a desolate time. It will be a time when you cannot find the word of God. When you cannot find the truth. God's grace will be lifted. And man will be on his own at that time to be able to understand. And God wants to seal in your mind this morning how these things are going to transpire. That's the very most important part of having these things sealed in your mind and knowing that God has you in his interest. He loves you. He desires that you know his truth. When we know Father's truths and we turn away from the idolatrous ways, we turn away from uh, the traditions of man, and we begin to study God's word and live it. Now, there's one thing to study God's word and understand it, but, friend, we must apply it to our lives. We must be doers of the word and not hearers only. So Father expects us to be aware of our surroundings and know when these things happen. Verse 15, And I will give her her vineyards from thence, and the valley of Achor. Now this valley of Achor is a, a, a trouble for a door of hope. And she shall sing there in the days of her youth, and as in the day when she came up out of the land of Egypt. This dry and desolate place that an individual is in is because of what they hear and what they are applying to their lives. Many ministers like to use philosophy and try to bring out a philosophical way of how to live your life and how, how to have pleasure. Friend, let me say this, that there's no pleasure that you're ever going to have until you wheel your life over to the true and living God. God understands the deception that many are going through, but he's also made a way. He's made a way for people to come out of that. And he said here, that valley of Achor, in other words, that valley of dryness, he said, I will open a door. In Ezekiel 37, he does. And he said that in that Ezekiel 37, he said, uh, do you see them, Ezekiel? He said, yes, I see them, Lord. And he said, they're dry. I'm paraphrasing, but he said that I see them and they're awfully dry. Dry because they do not have God's word. So often... I hear people say, Brother Randall, I've never heard it brought out like that before. I've never heard it that way before. And it's not that I'm anything special. It's just that I am quoting the Word of God. So in turn, it appears to me that they've never heard God's Word. And it's a shame. Everybody needs to hear God's Word. It is a, a free thing. It's not of a private interpretation as many would like to believe, but it's meant for all of us to know because this is what you will be judged by, by what is sealed in your mind and how you prepare yourself for the end times. Verse 15 again, he said, And I will give her her vineyards from thence and the valley of Achar for a door of hope. And she shall sing there as in the days of her youth. She'll sing that song as she did 
when she came out of Egypt. In Deuteronomy 32, that song of Moses, that blessed hope, that love that Israel has for God. Verse 16, And it shall be at that day, saith the Lord, that thou shalt call me Ish, and shalt call me no more Bela. Now this, uh, that day is the day of the Lord, the day of millennial reign of Christ. And he said, They saith the Lord, and thou shalt call me Ish. This word Ish in the Hebrew is husband. Amen. They will call me husband, and shalt not call me any more Balai. His Balai means master. Father does no longer want them to be his servant, but he wants them to be his bride, his love that he cares for, the one that he goes out of his way to help, goes out of his way to extend a hand of love. Father is doing it in every aspect. Many people are coming to the knowledge of the truth today, but there are so many that are still deceived. And it's our position as a child of God to help our brothers and sisters, to help them to come out of confusion, to come away from the fairy tales of the life and get down to the bare facts that God cares for his children. And there are certain things that Father wants us to do. And there are many things that Father does not want us to do. In this life, we have free will. A man can go or a woman can go and do as they please. Although there is repercussion when you do things opposite of what God's asked you to do. But it's so important that people realize that God has placed this in his word. He's placed it here for people to understand and to go and to follow it. Verse 17. For I will take away the names of Balaam out of her mouth, and they shall no more be remembered by their names. A time for teaching and discipline. This will be during the millennial reign of Christ. It will be a time that there will be no more confusion. There will be no more Balaam. That's what God calls this confusion, this idolatrous way that people really believe that it's part of God's service, and it's not. Satan is removed during the millennial, and there will be no more excuse. Again, there will be teaching and discipline in that time, and people will learn. Hey, let me also say this. Many that did not listen to the word of God during this day and they enter into the millennial with a mortal soul, not flesh. The concept has come up that uh, some people believe that there will be some that will still be in flesh during the millennial reign of Christ. But that's not true, for we understand that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of heaven. 1 Corinthians 15 and 52, we all will be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. Therefore, when we enter in, some will enter in with a mortal soul. What does that mean? It means that soul at the end of the thousand-year reign of Christ, at the great white throne judgment of God, if they have not followed the direction that God has asked, and they have not disciplined themselves, then their names go into books. And Father judges them out of them books. But also there will be many that will come to the knowledge of the truth. There will be many on that day. What day is that? The day of the Lord. The millennial reign. When Christ does come, many of our friends and loved ones will say, you know, they were right. They were right. I should have listened. But thanks be unto the Lord, he's made a way for them to understand the truth and to be taught properly without any confusion, 
or disruptance or anything to involve God's word. They will know. Verse 18. And in that day will I make a covenant with them, with the beast of the field, and with the fowls of heaven, and with the creeping things of the ground. And I will break the bow and the sword and the battle out of the earth, and will make them to lie down safely. This is the same as we read in Isaiah chapter 11. Isaiah chapter 11. In verse number 6, he says in his word, The wolf also shall dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid, and the calf, and the young lion, and the fatling together, and the little child shall lead them. It's important that you understand the mentality that he's speaking of in this verse. Uh, there will not be any little children there, but it'd be the mindset of a little child. It's exactly what he's saying, that all things will be delightful. All things will be good. There'll be nothing harmful in that day. Verse 19, very important verse here. And I will betroth thee unto me forever. <laughs> Thanks be unto God. Yea, I will betroth thee unto me in righteousness and in judgment and in loving kindness and in mercy. There will be a wonderful time for God's children that have obeyed and listened to his word, and prepared themselves for the coming of the Lord. There'll be a, a wonderful time. And it's in Revelation chapter 19, and verse number 7, and it says, Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife hath made herself ready. That's you, my friends. That's you that love studying God's word, that love preparing yourself and your families for that which is to come. Verse 8, And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. 9, And he saith unto me, Write, Blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he saith unto me, These are the true sayings of God. This is this betroth that God's going to do. Now, there will be another marriage at the end of the millennial. For those that have overcome the millennial and that have progressed and done what God has asked them to do. They also will be betrothed. They also will be involved in the love that God has. Verse 20, back in Hosea 2, I will even betroth thee unto me in faithfulness, and thou shalt know the Lord. <laughs> That's good news. They will know the Lord. They will not any longer be confused on whom it is that loves them or whom it is that provides for them. They will know. Verse 21. And it shall come to pass in that day. Which day? The day of the Lord. That I will hear, saith the Lord, I will hear the heavens and they shall hear the earth. Verse 22. And the earth shall hear the corn and the wine and the oil and they shall hear Jezreel. Father has said here in verse 22, he said, The earth shall hear the corn and the wine and the oil, 
and they shall hear Jezreel. The first part of Jezreel's name, it was, May God scatter. And it did. God scattered Israel and made them a desolate people. Why did God do this? Because he loved them and he done everything for them that they had need of. But yet they went whoring after other gods. They let other spirits be involved in their life and they done away with God and they put God off into a corner. But the second part of the name is that God, may God sow. And that's exactly what God done. In verse 23, he said, And I will sow her unto me in the earth. And I will have mercy upon her that had not obtained mercy. And I will say to them which were not my people, Thou art my people. And they shall say, Thou art my God. I will sow her unto me in the earth. This brings to mind John chapter 15. I love John chapter 15, for there's so much information given to a child of God in John chapter 15. But it says here in verse 1 in John 15, he said, I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. In other words, he's the one who takes care and prunes, and he's the one who sows the seed. Verse 2, every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. And that's what God will do. He will provide. If you have a desire to know his word, he will give it to you, friend. He will not withhold any wonderful thing from you, and that's his word. If you have a desire and that to help others, Father will make a way. Three, now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine, and no more can you except ye abide in me. We are to abide in Christ. We are to have Christ in our life, the Word of God. John chapter 1 and 14, it says, And the Word became flesh, and He dwelt amongst us, the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. It's the Word that helps you and I. It's the Word that directs you and I. It's the Word that prospers you and I. And it's God's Word that will carry us through to the millennial. Five, I am the vine, and you are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. And without me you can do nothing. Boy, is it ever true. Without Christ, without the Holy Spirit, and without God's anointing, this ministry could not go forward. This ministry would be nothing if it wasn't for Christ. If it wasn't for the word of God. Six, if a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. And men gather them and cast them into the fire and they are burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what ye will and it shall be done unto you. According to the ministry, according to the work that you desire. The work being the work for the Lord. So we see that God in verse 23 back in Hosea 2, that father has sowed. He said, and I will sow her unto me in the earth. <laughs> It'll be a glorious time. You won't have to walk around and ask if anybody understands God's word. You won't have to walk around and ask if they know Christ. If, have you ever been saved? That won't be part of the 
uh, situation in that day, for everyone will know. Everyone will understand. And he said, now I will have mercy upon her that had not obtained mercy. He's speaking to those that are underneath false doctrines, those that are being taught falsehood today, those that are believing in a rapture theory. It's not a pretty sight, but there is hope. There's hope for them. And Father loves them. Even though it goes against everything that God teaches, He still loves them. He cares for them. We are to pray for them, that they come out of confusion. They come out of it, and they come to the knowledge of the truth. I've said this before, and I'll say it again. The sand in the hourglass is running down, my friends. We don't have a whole lot of time left. It's high time that people understand that they are being misled. They are being taught lies. And Father's trying his best to open up the minds of the people. And I will say to them which are not my people, Thou art my people, and they shall say, Thou art my God. Praise be unto the Lord. Now, we're going to go into chapter 3. God's not through teaching. He's still teaching here in, verse, in chapter 3. Very important. Let's read on. Chapter 3 and verse number 1, and it reads, Then said the Lord unto me, Go yet, love a woman beloved of her friend, yet an adulteress, according to the love of of the Lord toward the children of Israel, who look to other gods and love flaggings of wine. <clears throat> this needs a little help. It says, the Lord says, uh, go yet, loved of a woman beloved of her friend. And this is speaking that of Hosea. You say, well, now Hosea was married to Gomer, it doesn't speak that of Gomer. Many people would like to think that this is Gomer, but this word yet means again. So meaning that Hosea has married again. Something's happened to Gomer. So he said, go yet, go again, and love a woman beloved of her friend, beloved of Hosea, an adulteress. This woman was adulteress at the time according to the love of the Lord toward the children of Israel. And God's comparing that to the love that he receives from the children of Israel. Who looks at to other gods uh, and loves flagons of wine. And this flagons of wine and cakes of grapes. Little cakes that was made and that for the offering and that to a sun god in that day. Verse 2. So I bought her to me for 15 pieces of silver and for a homer of barley and a half homer of barley. Now this homer of barley and half homer of barley is about 12. Right about 12 to 13 grosses of, uh, of barley and it was used to sanctify a man. This is what was talked about in Leviticus chapter 27. When a man was to sanctify himself to the Lord, he gave this as an offering unto God. Now God is showing here that he loves uh, his children. He said, and so I bought her to me for 15 pieces of silver. This 15 pieces of silver is the price of a slave. And for a homer and for the half homer of barley. And so God has opened up this door of salvation. He's opened up a way for people to come and to know him through his son, Jesus Christ. And that's what he has done. He's made it available for you and I. I don't know about you, friend, but I hold my salvation very dear in my heart. It's the most important thing in my life. When I yielded my life over to the Lord, my life changed to the better, and God be the glory to it all. Not anything that Randall done, but it was that what God done for me. And that's what he said he would do. 
He said he bought me. I was bought with the blood of Jesus through the shed blood on Calvary's cross. And I'm thankful for that this morning. Verse number three. And I said unto her, Thou shalt abide for me many days. Thou shalt not play the harlot, and thou shalt not be for another man, so will I also be for thee. This, uh, in verse 3, he said, Thou shalt abide. In other words, abstain from fornication. Abstain from being involved in idolatrous, adulterous ways. Father is looking for what? A chaste virgin. So he said, Thou shalt abide for me many days. Thou shalt not play the harlot, and thou shalt not be for another man. So if we're not to be for another man, what are we to do? We're to wait. We're to wait on the true Christ. We're to wait for him and not go whoring after the first one that comes. The understanding for a child of God is to know that the first one that arrives is the fake. The first Christ that arrives on the scene is a fake. He is a toxon. In other words, that's that bow that he has above his head. He is a fake, a fake imitation. And he's not the Christ that you are to wait upon. Verse number four. For the children of Israel shall abide many days without a king, and without a prince, and without a sacrifice, and without an image, and without an ephod, and without a, a teraphim. This uh, children of Israel, he's speaking of all 12 tribes. He's including Judah here also. And we know that Israel has been stripped of their king and their prince. And all these other things that uh, Israel likes to involve themselves in, God said he's going to take all that away and replace them with Christ Jesus. That's what he replaced all of it with. We no longer need any of these things, for we have a Savior, a Savior that goes with us even to the ends of the earth, that we are never left alone, that our love for him should be honest and true. Verse number five to come to a close. Afterward shall the children of Israel return and seek the Lord their God and David their king and shall fear the Lord and his goodness in the latter days. These latter days that we are living in, it's so important that we reverend God, that we give God the glory for what we have learned and what we have come to the understanding. This second wife is very much like you and I today. Many were adulterous in their religious form. Many were listening to which was the only thing that you could hear of a rapture theory and a, 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 a way of uh, easy believism. But we came out of it. Thanks be unto God. Thanks be unto the Lord. His Spirit has been poured out on His children today. And that's why you and I are learning more and more every day. That's why God's allowed this ministry to be able to help people because of His love and His kindness Toward his children. If there's anything that you got out of this message this morning, that God loves, and he loves you. He cares about your condition. He cares about the condition that your soul is in. Not only you, but those around you. So there's Hosea chapter 2 and chapter 3 in the finish. And we're going to pick up in chapter 4 in our next lesson. And uh, we hope that you've come to the understanding that Israel in days of past 
were easily coerced into worshiping things that were not of God. And we see that a lot today. We see how the easy believism and how the new wave of, of worship and all these different new things have come about and uh, people latch on to that. They like it because it supposedly they go with the flow. They go with the grain uh, of the uh, people that are flowing toward that. Uh, it's popular, and uh, a lot of your mega churches uh, are teaching these kind of things, and they uh, bring in lots and lots and lots of people. But never forget that judgment begins at the house of the Lord. Judgment begins with the man or the woman teaching the word of God. It's so important that we understand God's truths and that you are being taught the truth. We love you and we thank you again for being with us this morning. Thank you for all the cards and letters. Keep them coming in, would you? It's just a blessing to hear that uh, we've helped and uh, been a part of your life and been a part of your Bible study. And we appreciate you and thank you so much here at the Fresh Start. We love you and we care about you. Until the next time, may the Lord richly bless.